Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and you never know, one day someone else might show up and be talking here instead of me, so they would say, you're not your artist in residence or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, um, welcome to day four of 25 days of tonalism. And uh, the study that I am doing today is painted after Henry Ward Ranger, and it is called Mason's Island, and it's a really neat little painting. Um, this is one of the ones I was looking forward to doing. A lot of these, I, I don't know if I did a Henry Ward Ranger in the 100 Days of Tonalism. He's not technically a tonalist. Um, I selected, and in fact, if you look at a lot of his work, you'll see what I mean. It's not tonal in nature. However, I felt this had a definite tonal quality, and he was certainly painting in the time of the tonalist movement. And there's an awful lot of artists that would move back and forth between the, uh, the different modes of working. Um, and it wasn't, uh, of course, you need to remember, of course, that... Uh, art history as a way of defining things in the past uh, and the people in the past didn't necessarily see uh, their lives and their work in the way that art history later comes to define it so that's always good to keep in mind and I certainly keep that in mind when I use my definition of what tonalism, tonalism is and is not um, really it's just a word um, and it defines to me a certain approach and style of painting Anyway, um, you may have noticed that uh, some ads are popping up on these videos. Hopefully, uh, you know, it's not pissing you guys off too much, but um, I do put a lot of time and effort into this uh, this project and to the ongoing uh, series I've been doing for you, and I'm, I'm happy to do it. I don't really, I have never really asked anybody for any uh, financial remuneration, but I do have expenses in my life. I mean, it costs me money even just to paint, not to mention uh, living. So um, I made the decision to go ahead and uh, include um, ads on the site. And uh, the reason is, I mean, I've, well, I don't have tons of subscribers, but I have a certain amount of subscribers now. And I believe it's been growing exponentially. And I, as I think people find value and uh, the, uh, the work that we're doing is uh, finding its audience. Um, um, and I'm happy uh, to provide value and uh, that's um, always f at the forefront of my thinking when I'm doing this so, you know how can I how can I bring something valuable to the table um, to share with the world and uh, really it's my whole motivation for even doing art but um, I'll probably cover this uh, ad thing again in um, our blog post and video tomorrow where We'll be getting into some of my own stuff um, there. Not that this study that I'm doing of Henry Ward Ranger is not my own stuff, but uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you're grooving on it either way. Uh, got going to have a couple links in the blog post about Henry Ward Ranger. I, I really don't think we covered him in 100 days. Uh, but uh, here's a, this is from a site called nga.gov. That's National Gallery, National Gallery of Art. So... And uh, Henry Ward Ranger, he was living uh, and working uh, 1858 to 1916, so he's solidly in that tonalist era. And I'll just read maybe a paragraph from the bi biography here to you. Um, the landscape painter Henry Ward Ranger was born in 1858 in Syracuse, New York, the son of a commercial photographer. He attended Syracuse University from 1873 to 1875. Self-taught and with little or no formal instruction, he began to paint watercolors. Ranger opened a New York City studio in the mid-1870s and exhibited at the American Watercolor Society in 1880. Impressed by the Barbizon School landscapes and Corot he saw in New York, the young artist went to Paris, where he was attracted to the works of Millet, Theodore Rousseau, and Adolphe Monticelli. I'm not familiar with that guy. Neither the detailed manner of Bastien Lepage nor the new Impressionism were of interest to him. Deeply respectful of the old masters, Ranger improved his technical ability by copying paintings by Constable, Claude, and Hobema at the Louvre. He spent several important formative years in the Netherlands studying with the Hague schoolmasters. 
uh, and a lot of other people. Uh, all artists that he admired. He, da, da, do. Um, basically, Barbizon School. There's a direct link between the Barbizon, Barbizon School and tonalism. So this may. Uh, I have seen some paintings in my little researches today that I would define as American Impressionism, but the Barbizon School really. You can look at tonalism as the American Barbizon movement, and that's um, that's just the way it is. You know, there's a direct line from Corot to the tonalists and. Uh, also, to a lesser degree, f with Millet. Millet um, had a tonal feeling in his work. He certainly was a Barbizon painter, but uh, really it's Corot and this atmospheric, sort of moody uh, ooh, quality that um, wasn't 100% realistic. And I think that's the, the main thing that really distinguished the school of landscape painting is that uh, whereas the Hudson River guys, we look at their paintings these days and go, well, that's not terribly realistic. But at the time, they were really doing their damnedest to capture na nature truthfully. They were, they were doing their best to be the human equivalent of photographers in many ways. And of course, they were making a heck of a lot of aesthetic decisions and definitely juicing up their paintings every which way they could. But uh, you'll see, uh, for example, in a lot of uh, works of the Hudson River School, um, where they, you know, they're, you're looking at a tree that would have been, you know, a hundred yards away from you, and you can see in the painting that he's painted little strokes for the leaves, and this is one of the the main breakaway aspects of the Barbizon school. And you know, I have to say, uh, John Constable, um, I got a book of his, and when I was in New York, and I think in our next, uh, well, actually, it'll be probably just studies after landscape painters I, I don't know I'm already working on the 25 more days of tonalism in the studio these days but uh, and there is no constables there but anyway in this book um, when you look at some of his studies uh, from um, from nature that he did or studies he did in the studio uh, they're just amazing how crisp and modern they feel um, and it was uh, it wasn't until you get into his larger more finished works that you kind of get that more stultified sort of old uh, old timey feeling uh, which I think is very interesting so in many ways um, uh, the way that I my finished paintings look can sometimes come to resemble a constable study and I, I, I can see a bit why um, after getting this book why when people come into my studio they can mention constable and when they, they would do that uh, previously I would be like oh I guess so you know he was a landscape painter and he was actually a big inspirer and influencer of Camille Corot. So there's a there's a line of ascent from Constable to Corot and the Barbizon guys to the American tonalist painters like Georgia Ness and Charles Warren Eaton and John Francis Murphy and also Henry Ward Ranger. And there's a, quite a lot of information online about Henry Ward Ranger. Uh, so, um, like I said, I've got a couple links. Uh, I did, uh, you know, Wikipedia comes up, but Wikipedia, you're annoying me. You know, just run some ads, okay? I, I don't mind. I don't mind that there's an ad in the corner of the page. I really don't. Um, this whole PBS approach is just annoying. You know, it's a giant block of type at the top, you know, I, I, whatever. It makes me feel like not even going to Wikipedia, and I'm certainly not putting a link to it because. You guys need to need to do something else. Anyway, that's just my two cents. Uh, we got just a few minutes going here. I guess uh, this is Saturday, and it is uh, December tenth in um, New Zealand. Um, it's Friday, December 9th uh, in the U.S. and England. And I um, hope you guys are having a great Friday there. Um, I'm having a nice Saturday. I was in the studio this morning. I'm home for lunch right now, um, and I tend to work on these in my home office. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm not going to make the mistake I made last week of forgetting about it on Saturday and having to do two uh, in one day, which was, you know, a bit taxing on the brain. Um, but uh, anyway, today I did a couple more uh, drawings for my... Um, 25 more days of tonalism project which you know probably be coming out well sometime next year um, you know 
uh, yeah, work on it a little bit. Yeah, it's good for mornings because you know this because I'm making copies after masters paintings. It's not as impregnated with uh, whatever you call it uh, drama uh, as doing my own work. Not that my approach to doing my work is dramatic, but it is my own work. Uh, where I'm making a copy after master painting, I'm really I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to do a good job, you know, um, of, of making a study. And so, um, be heading back to the studio after uh, doing this little video. And uh, when I get back this afternoon after uh, doing some painting, uh, we'll work on the blog post. And uh, really don't know what we're going to talk about today. I guess I'll think about that. And. Uh, you guys will sure find out. Anyway, I can see we're close to the end here. Thanks for joining me. Go to my website, landscapepainter.co.nz, if you want to see more of my work. And thanks for your patience with the ads. I'll keep the information coming.